ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் A warm welcome from the Narayana Hirudayala Health Team. In view of uh, World Tuberculosis Day, we are today discussing about tuberculosis. And uh, here is our uh, senior consultant in the Department of Pediatric Medicine, PACU and uh, Pediatric Pulmonologist. A warm welcome, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, as we know, 24th March is celebrated as World TB Day. every year on this occasion of this year 2022 we are here to discuss about the important aspects of tuberculosis yeah. can you tell us about what is this tuberculosis disease tuberculosis is one of the very oldest disease of the mankind and we all know tuberculosis for uh, ages coming to its literary meaning it is caused by a bacteria called mycobacteria tuberculosis and it is acquired by children predominantly from their parents and it affects in portion of children the lungs and in some of the children it can affect other parts of the body yes. i'll come to that later okay. so the infection with mycobacterium tuberculosis is called actually tuberculosis in children okay. uh, it was it was significantly higher prevalence in the last century due to improvement in the standard of living improvement in the vaccination the childhood prevalence of tuberculosis has come down significantly although it still is one of the most important causes of chronic infections in pediatric population okay thank you as we know uh, this tuberculosis will be spreading as early as possible but how does this spreading occurs and what are the measures we should take as a as a parent of a child or whatever uh, how do we prevent this spreading sir okay very good question mycobacterial tuberculosis as i mentioned is a bacteria and it does spread from a one person to other person unlike in adult population children especially the younger children that is for example children less than 5 years are predominantly house bound so the occurrence of infection is predominantly from their parents so your question is how does it spread it spreads from parents to their children in the younger age group in the older age group the children who are in contact with tuberculosis outside their home can acquire so the patient who has got open cavitatory type of tuberculosis which means whenever they are coughing hmm. the sputum contains these bacteria and these group of patients are called as open, open type. type unlike adults the pediatric populations generally do not have sputum and therefore also do not tend to expectorate expectorate means they do not bring out this bacteria so there is a very sharp difference between the way adults spread and the pediatric uh, uh, patients uh, spread the infection it is adults who are responsible for spreading this bacteria and patient, children especially uh, will acquire that bacteria through inhalation mm. what it means is if in a close vicinity in a house if one parent is having chronic cough the other persons or the member who are in close contact with that person who has this cough or sputum they are likely to catch this bacteria once this bacteria is inhaled it lodges in our respiratory system what it means we have got a larger breathing tube then a smaller breathing tube and the airway sacs once the bacteria lodges there it grows gradually and then forms a focus and that focus by the effective immunity of the body it will control that infection and some patients if those mechanisms of controlling the infections are not very effective then it can rapidly spread and cause tubercular pneumonia or it can spread to other parts of the body maybe around heart maybe around brain causing meningitis spreading to the bone causing some uh, bone tuberculosis okay. so it can spread literally to any part of the body coming back to your question it is transformed from one person to other through inhalation and close contacts are more commonly acquiring this disease in the early childhood that is the main mechanism okay sir as you said sir uh, that you told when the immunity uh, occurs 
low then only the disease will get severe so i want to know who are are at risk to get this disease more that's a very good question basically which group of do all the patients who acquire this infection get the, get disease? the disease answer is no lot of patients do get this bacteria and their own body contains it the meaning of the contain is that it tries to stop that stop. so it, it just forms a foci of infection and that is sealed by the body's cells so that it doesn't spread and then eventually those cells are die mm. and these are we see in some x-rays as calcification spots suggesting in the past child had tuberculosis and his body has fought mm. however the patients who are at extreme risk are children who have got malnutrition mm. that is whose weight is extremely low and number 2 those who have got some bad infections like measles pertussis or number 3 those who have got immune deficiencies for example those who have got severe combined immunodeficiency that means their immunity is not very good or those who have got acquired immunodeficiency like aids so these are the common conditions who are more at a risk however it is not uncommon for a completely perfect healthy child or an adult to catch this infection even they can develop this particular disease and they can have a severe lot of my patients after early childhood group are adolescent or completely healthy, healthy. well just about to write their 10th exams 12th yeah. exams suddenly fall sick and when i investigate they have a very bad tuberculosis so there are risk groups who are more vulnerable however even a common person can acquire tuberculosis and de develop a full blown disease so how do the parents notice that child is having this disease like what are the symptoms they can notify and come to the hospital as early as possible yes that's a very practical uh, uh, questions that you are posing the children who have got tuberculosis they initially have fever fever can be initially mild as the time goes it can be high grade fever also in some children the fever can be continuous and in some children it can be more often in the night time okay. some parents very characteristically say sir there is a yawning rise of temperature yes. daytime the temperature is normal mm -hmm. and that fever if it goes on for two or three weeks you should start worrying about possibility of tuberculosis and if this is associated with cough which is gradually increasing and becoming more severe and that associated with expectoration and if that expectoration is associated with some blood highly suggest that it, it could be tuberculosis. tuberculosis and this combination if it is associated with loss of appetite loss of loss weight, weight and if there is a close contact with tuberculosis is extremely suggestive of tuberculosis in the child and definitely needs a, a pediatrician to see and evaluate okay, sir. Uh, so whenever they this kind of symptoms they have and they come to hospital how do we proceed like what mm -hmm. the tests can be done as we notice that in children doing tests are very difficult we know that I entirely agree with investigating uh, children is a difficult task the difference between childhood pulmonary tuberculosis and adult tuberculosis is that in children there is generally no sputum mm -hmm and they are not able to bring out the sputum so we know that medically children produce a lot of sputum but that is gradually swallowed and we would like to collect that particular sputum what we do is request the parents to come in the early morning we put a tube called ng tube nasogastric tube and from the stomach we collect all the secretions which presumably are the lung secretions that are swallowed and that contains this bacteria. So this is called as early morning fasting nasogastric aspirate for tubercular bacilli. And we send this sample for a, one of the very rapidly developed nuclear amplification test for gene expert. And if it is positive, we also send these samples for culture. So one of the means of collecting is nasogastric tube. However, 
when we see a children who are older 12 14 years old who have got calf as well as sputum production or expectoration we request them to calf and give some sample for these things however okay. i would like to bring to the notice of viewers that tuberculosis doesn't necessarily affect lungs it can affect glands it, the glands can be in the neck or glands can be in the stomach in the groin and if if they are growing gradually over a period of two to three weeks with or without fever with or uh, without loss of weight may be suggestive of tuberculosis so we, with the help of fine needle we collect uh, uh, secretions from these lymph glands and send for same test as i mentioned in some scenarios we might need to completely excise these lesions and uh, sent for histopathology to confirm the diagnosis of tuberculosis. Unfortunately, the tubercular bacilli or the tubercular disease may not be just confined to the lungs and glands. Sometimes it can be in the brain, spine, bones, it can be in the skin and kidneys. So depending on where the infection is there, we need a specific samples and spe special investigations maybe CT scan, MRI to confirm tubercular lesions in the brain. So depending on where the disease is, we collect the sample, send lab to the laboratory and confirm the diagnosis. Previously, the test used to take 8 weeks, 12 weeks. With the current invention called line probe as a back tech technology, we are able to get report within one hour. Gene expert or nuclear amplification test, yes, we can see that tubercular bacteria are present within one hour. Mm. And to grow them on culture and confirm the diagnosis, we are now able to do within two to four weeks compared to long waiting times in the past. Mm. So the process of investigations has advanced uh, and we now we, we can get a very rapid results. Thank you. We are now advanced in diagnosing. So, how easily we can be it can be treated, and what is the duration of the treatment? How Treat, as treatment treatment uh, we have been effectively treating this disease for uh, more than few decades, and uh, the treatment remain continues to remain these four medications that is called isoniazid, rifampicin, ethambutal, pyrazinamide. The combination of four drugs are needed in this particular condition because, unlike other bacteria. The bacteria in tuberculosis are hiding within the cell. They are called intracellular mycobacteria. And these cells, these bacteria are very difficult to be killed. So we need not just one, two, we need multiple drugs so that it can attack by different mechanism, the intracellular microorganisms. Therefore, we need to give four medications for two months after two months we have to give for remaining four months three drugs so total duration is six months however some forms of diseases mainly in the bone brain may need much longer duration predominantly uh, nine to twelve months okay. so as we know that uh, this treatment will be prolonged how is our government taking the initiative to support these kind of patients like how, what is the initiatives taken by the government to True. support them? Government of India is really uh, proactive. They have started a program called National Tuberculosis Elimination Program. Our global mission was there. Uh, global mission was that we should eradicate uh, tuberculosis from by 2030. However, under the able guidance of the Prime Minister and the National Tuberculosis Elimination Program, 2025 they want to eliminate mm. tuberculosis from India that's a brilliant proposition by and effort under that direction they have created a directory called Nikshe which is a notification so everyone who identifies tuberculosis has to report to the government of India uh, it is an online notification which is a very good system to notify to the government of India any positive cases. Yeah. And government of India has also taken a lot of initiatives to treat uh, these patients by providing incentive of 500 rupees per month, free anti-tubercular medications, 
protein rich diet about some uh, what you say even the asha workers or health workers who are providing care they at the completion of therapy get a incentive of 2 to 4000 this is a brilliant initiative by government of india to curtail this menace of tuberculosis which has been uh, tolling the life of the indians for centuries mm. not just indians across the world it has been uh, uh, causing lot of pr- problems leading to significant morbidity and i am very hopeful that in next uh, 10 years uh, we will see uh, and reach that goal okay sir that is a good initiative by our government which will help uh, the patients Definitely. to come through the all the sufferings and all so my last question sir uh, the parents will be asking that my child has been vaccinated for uh, tb when baby was born they have given bcg so how how effective is the bcg to prevent tb sir bcg is very useful in young children to protect serious forms of tuberculosis in the tuberculosis we have a mild tuberculosis called pulmonary tuberculosis in which child is just unwell with fever loss of weight loss of appetite chronic cough and if you treat effectively it responds however younger the age group more severe forms of tuberculosis those severe forms of tuberculosis what we call as miliary tuberculosis which means extensive tuberculosis spreading all across the body high grade fever unwell loss of appetite and they may die similarly tb meningitis that has got lot of complications long term short term and there is a significant morbidity and mortality those severe forms of tuberculosis prevalence is reduced in the group of children who receive bcg vaccination however it may not reduce the prevalence of normal tuberculosis in later in the life but it does reduce the risk of severe forms i and we the doctors community strongly believe that it's a good vaccine everyone should give okay sir thank you for enlightening with all this aspects of tuberculosis sir and thank you for the viewers listen to the a uh, very good speech by the sir thank you thank you